Welcome back to Mining Focus TV. Today we're going to talk about acid rock drainage as a part of our series on metals and mining background. Let's begin by defining some terms like pH, the standard measure of acidity. The pH scale actually measures hydrogen ion concentration in water solutions. Pure neutral water has a pH of 7, acids have a pH less than 7, and alkaline solutions a pH greater than 7. Like the decibel scale for noise, the pH scale is logarithmic. A small change in pH represents a large change in H plus concentration. pH 1 has a hydrogen ion concentration and acidity 1 million times higher than pH 7. The maintenance of a desired pH range is important for living organisms, agriculture, industry, and the environment. For example, human health depends on a blood pH being within a narrow range. Plant growth can be severely affected if pH of soils, rivers, and lakes is too high or too low. Metal items like steel pipes and pumping equipment can be corroded quickly if they carry acidic water. Some solutions resist changes to pH and are called buffers. They tend to act like sponges for H plus and prevent water from becoming acid. Fluids in living organisms and seawater have strong buffering potential to prevent acids from developing. In contrast, pure rainwater is poorly buffered. Substances like lime that increase the buffering capacity of water are called bases. Calcite is the mineral form of lime, and limestone is a rock made of calcite. When acid waters and base-like calcite are combined, a neutralization reaction in which the water is deacidified and salt is produced. The natural pH of water and soil varies around the earth. Acid soils are most often found in areas of high rainfall, like jungles and forested areas, while desert soils are alkaline. This is because rainwater naturally removes CO2 from the atmosphere, forming a weak acid with a pH of 5.7. The naturally acidic rain then weathers rock and soil, which also lowers soil pH. Natural plant root activity then further acidifies soil as minerals like iron required for growth are more soluble in acids. As a result, the optimum pH range for most plants is acidic, between 5.5 and 7.0. So now let's talk about acid rock drainage. Metals rarely occur in their pure state, but are often formed in nature combined with sulfurous minerals called sulfides. Metals are not usable as sulfides, and after mining the sulfide minerals, sulfur needs to separate and be removed to produce a pure metal. This process takes human energy, but if we're lucky, nature has already done the work for us. When sulfide minerals are exposed to air and water, they corrode. Take, for example, the iron sulfide pyrite, which is the most common sulfide mineral. When exposed to atmospheric oxygen and water, sulfur is removed as acid and iron oxide, a rusty material, is formed. Sulfides located below the water table or underwater will not weather significantly because the concentration of dissolved oxygen in natural waters is approximately 25,000 times lower than found in the atmosphere. Pyrite plus oxygen plus water equals rust or iron hydroxide plus acid. Where sulfides have been exposed to weathering for a long time in areas, for example, like Nevada or Chile, Nature can remove all the sulfur for us. This kind of weathering is often helpful for gold and copper as these metals can be more cheaply removed from oxidized rock, now devoid of sulfur. The reverse is often true for silver, lead, and zinc, which are generally more inexpensive to refine into metal from sulfides than oxide minerals. The weathering of sulfides is a natural phenomenon that is happening all the time. Pyrite is the most common sulfide mineral on Earth and occurs over vast areas generally without more valuable sulfide minerals. Pyrite produces more acid than other sulfide minerals when weathered and is generally the cause of rusty rock exposures called gaussins. They can be seen on mountain ridges, road cuttings, and other excavations. But rust isn't the only signal that weathering sulfides give to the exploration geologist looking for metal. 
The acid created by weathering sulfides can dissolve metals out of the rock like copper and zinc and can naturally turn streams and even rivers acidic. To explore for sulfide deposits, geologists look for naturally acidic creeks with high metal contents. Weathering sulfides can create acid conditions and metal levels in streams so high that fish and other organisms can't live in them. For example, in Colorado's Lake Creek, watershed natural acid rock drainage has developed from large exposures of pyrite on a mountain. For over 20 kilometers downstream from the Red Gossens, pH values as low as 2.5 occur in the stream along with high dissolved metal concentrations. Locally, this has had severe adverse impacts to aquatic life. Nevertheless, the water and sediment quality of Twin Lakes Reservoir, 27 kilometers downstream, is sufficiently diluted and buffered to support a trout fishery, and remnants of acid rock drainage are negligible. Moving on now to acid rock drainage and mining. Excavation like mining can accelerate the process of acid rock drainage because it locally exposes more sulfide minerals to atmospheric oxygen. Historically in construction, road building and mining industry, there was limited recognition of this potential problem. And there are a number of sites and old mines where increased acid rock drainage was created by excavation. For example, the Halifax Canada International Airport was built on sulfide rocks, which when exposed locally increased natural acid rock drainage. Many older mines in the world also added to natural acid drainage and resulted in impacts on the environment. Although it is often difficult to know how much acid is naturally produced and has resulted from mine disturbance. For this reason, acid rock drainage is often raised as a concern when new mines are proposed. The presence of sulfides does not guarantee that acid rock drainage will happen. As many rocks contain sufficient buffering capacity to limit or prevent acid development from the sulfides present, nevertheless, in the last 20 to 30 years, a much better understanding of the potential for acid drainage has evolved. Strategies for preventing acid development are implemented in all modern industrial mining operations. Where acid rock drainage is likely to occur, its control is a primary objective in the design, construction, and operation of the rock and tailing storage facilities with established long-term measures to prevent acid development and treat water when it's necessary. Treatments include such measures as adding buffer materials like limestone, limiting the area of exposed acid-generating rock, compacting acid-generating rock to reduce water infiltration, and covering intermediate ceiling layers. In the long term, acid drainage control is achieved by covering the acid-generating rock with a water-saturated cap, like a wetland keeps out oxygen. By closely monitoring and balancing mine water with natural rain and groundwater, Modern mines ensure that acid rock drainage is controlled long after mines are shut down. Mining removes and sequesters sulfides from where they would naturally cause acid rock drainage from weathering. In this way, modern mining could, in fact, locally improve water quality where acid environments harmful to aquatic life might not naturally prevail. We hope that you have learned that acid rock drainage is a natural phenomenon. Some misleading call it acid mine drainage as if it's exclusive to mining. But acid rock drainage only occurs where there are sulfide minerals. And many mines excavate rocks that do not even contain these minerals. In fact, there are tens of thousands of naturally acid streams around the world draining from areas where there has never been mining and pyrite-rich rocks naturally occur. In mining, the potential to increase acid drainage is well understood now. Excavation activity like mining and construction now put established engineering measures in place to ensure that the environment and human welfare is protected during mining and especially after mines are closed. That concludes this episode of Mining Focus TV. Stay tuned for more of this series as we continue to illuminate metals in mining at miningfocustv.com.